Now to the other big news of the day, of course, a little relief for the hospitality industry. Tourism Minister Mamaloko Kubayangubane announcing this afternoon that leisure travel within your province will now be allowed under Level 3 lockdown. Let's get more reaction from the sector. And I'm joined by the Chief Operations Officer for Hospitality at Sun International, Graham Wood. Good evening, Graham. Thanks very much. I'm sure you're very pleased to hear this news. But what exactly does it mean for the group? How much of a boost is it going to be? Yeah, thanks, Sally. Uh, it's certainly a step in the right direction in that we can open hotels at, uh, for example, our casino properties. So we can now at least uh, allow some of our customers to stay in our hotels, even though they're within our own province. But it's not quite there yet because a place like Sun City that relies on uh, travel from Gauteng as, an, Gauteng, as an example, will still have to remain closed. Okay, so just just to explain to me, are all your hotels reopening or only some of them? Yeah, we, we're only going to reopen hotels that are linked to our casino properties. Hotels at Sabaya down in uh, Mshlanga or just outside Mshlanga and KZN will also reopen. And then we've got a property at Worcester, Golden Valley Casino will also reopen. So most of our properties will reopen, our hotels. But the, unfortunately, the big one for us is uh, Sun City, which is heavily reliant on domestic leisure travel. And one must also remember that the, with the international source markets being closed, the restrictions on conference travel and the number of delegates, uh, it makes a property like Sun City, which is uh, well known for hosting big conferences and events uh, and, an international, uh, and the international market, that uh, those segments are closed to us. So, uh, and we can't open Sun City alone just for the Rustenburg market or the Northwest provincial market. It's too big a property and is too reliant on, uh, on travel from Gauteng and other provinces. Yeah, in fact, I was just bemoaning the fact that here in Gauteng, we have got such a tiny province geographically. There's really not much for us to do. And, of course, Gauteng is a wealthy province, so it really could um, have benefited Sun City um, if people were allowed to travel from Gauteng. I'm just wondering how much of a knock uh, the pandemic has had on the group and, and just how bad it's been. It's been a big uh, problem for us and other operators in the hospitality and gaming industry. Um, we've been closed since the 26th. In fact, we probably started closing a week before the, the lockdown on the 26th of March. And we've had very little business uh, in our casinos and hotels until we reopened our casinos on the 1st of July, uh, which was a welcome boost for us because at least we could get some traffic and some custom into our casino properties. Then, of course, the curfew had a problem for us because... As you can imagine, a lot of our casino trade happens in the evenings. So the extension of the curfew now for an additional hour uh, is also a big boost for us. And that just gives an hour extra trading at our casinos uh, during the day. Have you had to retrench staff? Are you facing retrenchments? We're having to look at our structures. Uh, there's no uh, secret to the fact that when you've been operating for four or five months without any income, you have to look at your cost base and your structures. We are engaging with our partners, uh, our labor partners uh, at this moment in time on the restructure of a certain number of our properties um, because we have to think about how we're going to position our group uh, as we move out of this. Because, you know, once the COVID, I wouldn't say once COVID passes, but once we learn how to live uh, with the risk of COVID in the foreseeable future, it's going to take us a long, long time as an industry to get back to pre-COVID trading levels. Think about the international inbound market. That's not going to recover overnight in 2021. You're probably looking the back end of 2021 into 2022. So we've got to make sure our structures are adjusted and aligned uh, ourselves and the rest of the industry to be able to, to cater for that slow return to pre-COVID-19 levels. Sad but true. What are you expecting? I mean, you must be looking at the way the pandemic is moving through the world and, and the way different um, countries are responding to try and assess when the local market might open up nationally and then, of course, when the international market might start coming in. What is your sense? Are we talking sometime this year or maybe only next year? Yeah, Sally, it is all dependent on the, the rate of trans, the increase in the, the number of uh, new cases and until we start flattening the curve as a, as a, as a country. And, and I do, uh, I, I do uh, sympathize with government having to balance the, this, the, the, the conundrum of livelihoods and, uh, and lives. I, I do get it. I do get a sense that domestic leisure travel uh, will return, my estimate, 1 October. 
I think we're, we should be opening for interprovincial leisure travel. International is going to be a lot longer, although there is debate as to where the real risk of transmissions uh, resides. As it, is it going to come through the inbound international market or is it mainly uh, community risks that are, are more prevalent in terms of the, the, the growth in cases? Uh, but th that's not for now. I, I think we need to be planning for a reopening of international travel the back end of 2020. I'm certainly hoping before the end of the year. Well, thank you very much for your time this evening. COO for Hospitality at Sun uh, International, Graham Woods, telling us that sadly Sun City is staying closed because there's just not going to be enough business until we can move from or travel across provincial borders. Still ahead.